Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, did a mother have a paranormal encounter with a child or thing that wasn't supposed to be there? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And it is 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd absolutely love to hear them. Of course, you can also write in at Real Ghost Stories Online. Dot com. And if you like the show, help keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. That's where you get all the bonus episodes of the show, new one every single week, uh, as well as access to the archive of episodes, which is the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. Uh, just literally months and months and months of listening that you can have there. If you listen 24-7, it would just keep going and going and going. Nothing outlasts the Real Ghost Stories online archive. <laughs> You can uh, check that out at uh, ghostpodcast.com or uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Carol <laughs> with you on today's episode. What's going on? Oh, you made me laugh out loud. Nothing outlasts that. <laughs> and, and for those, does. it keeps going and, and going, going and going. I miss the old Energizer ads. Those were fun. The the bunny would break in and it would be like a fake ad at first. So then it would be like just kind of just slightly outrageous. And like, oh, my God, it's not real. It's the Energizer bunny. ad. Those are fun. Well, and I literally laughed out loud. I know you have my mic turned down, but my old dog, who is pretty deaf, like <laughs> came up and like walked over here. You OK? <laughs> Since I'm here, you got any good treats? I could use something. That'd be great. Please. Thank you. Just a little something. Yeah. I walked all the way over here, you know. It's like he does that to me all the time. Like, what do you got? You got anything else? I seriously spend, I am not shitting you. I probably spend 40 to $50 a week on dog treats, <laughs> which is stupid, That's but I don't have children. Dog. Yes. <laughs> but, but it's like, he's so picky and he's like, I don't want that. But, oh, but that one's good. And then the next day, yeah, the one I liked yesterday, I don't really like that one today, but that one. So, so I'm always trying to find that one. You're always kind of like giving him so many choices. It may, maybe that's why, because there's so many choices. He's really developed like a taste to all these different treats. And most dogs are just like, kind of looks like meat. I'll eat it. But now right? you, you've, you've spoiled him so much that now he's a real picky eater. It- <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not um, discounting that at all. Yeah. But um, I think he's going to. Oh, he just took one. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like he's almost 16. He doesn't eat much at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, in part, he's got this big, big ass tumor. So his little tummy's gotten small. Mm -hmm. But so, I mean, I will give him whatever it takes. Sure. It's like, what what do you want to eat? I'll make it for you. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm vegetarian. (laughs) I've made my dog steak. (laughs) Like, that's weird. Carol went out and even hunted it herself. Like, okay, I might have just bought it frozen and heated it with some broth, but still, um, that's really weird. And I felt really weird buying that at the grocery store. I kind of felt like somebody's going to see me. (laughs) Carol Hughes, I thought she was vegetarian, but look what's in her basket. I don't know what's all about that. They're going to judge me. Yeah. But, um, uh, no, I really don't care what anybody eats. That's your business. But, um, He won't eat that. Like any other dog would Mm -hmm. be like, what's this? Yeah. I'm more in the mood for tuna rolls tonight. Can we do that? Can we do the sushi place again? Yeah. And actually, I went um, with tuna for a while. That was good. (laughs) Like I've tried everything. And I always have people on Facebook is like, like telling me what to give him. I'm like, you try living with this dog. (laughs) The whole thing is just trying to get him to eat something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's great. Because the old guy, he's lost like 15 pounds. Yeah. So, I mean, he's pretty skinny for an old guy, but we're doing what we can. Yeah. And he just he just ate that treat, too. There we so go. So that, that, that was worth the $12.49 <laughs> I spent on that bag. For a single treat. She's getting them <laughs> artisanly baked. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, no, right. he, he had yeah. more than that. <laughs> uh, 855-853-4802, our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's jump over to our first story of the day. It said, did a mother have a paranormal encounter with a child or thing that wasn't supposed to be there? Let's uh, jump into this one here and as soon as I get it scrolled down. There we go. In regards to the person contacting Elvis on a Ouija board, uh, this is a story I guess we had on a couple weeks ago. Uh, when my brother was in high school, he was with some friends playing with one. The ghost they, contact, they contacted, said, contacted said it was Elvis. So they said to prove it. They were listening to country music on the stereo and his friend had a teddy bear that fell over. Once it did, the stereo switched to playing Teddy Bear by Elvis. Not sure what happened after that as he did not go any further. Usually the topic of spirits made him uncomfortable. So I was surprised to hear he even touched the board. It could have been he thought they were fake before he touched it. I just know that was the only time he messed with one. Growing up, our mom was extremely gifted. There were many experiences we all had. My other brother and I talk of these instances freely, even having our own podcast to share them. But my oldest brother will not discuss anything else that has ever happened to him other than the Elvis story. I think it's because when he was a baby, he and my parents lived in a haunted house. My mom says she would hear voices outside when no one was around. Both houses next door were empty and there were no houses behind them. My dad worked nights and my mom would see a man in her doorway watching her sleep. She says one night she heard my oldest brother screaming from his crib. She went to check on him and behind her the closet door swung open. There was a basketball at the back of the shelf in the closet. The ball rolled off the shelf and bounced three times on the floor before it hit my mom square in the back. After seeing a celebrity on the Johnny Carson show talk of a similar experience, she started to pray at the corner of her bed as the celebrity said they did. However, she continued to have things happen as long as they lived there. I can tell my brother has memories of this house, but to this day he refuses to talk about them. Talking to friends of this that grew up in the neighborhood. They would say things that would still happen for years after my family moved away. Interesting note, after my parents divorced and my dad remarried, my stepmother's sister moved into that exact same house. However, they've never had any occurrences while living there. I don't know if the house was blessed or exercised somewhere through the years or what. I just know that there was something malicious there at one point in time. Thoughts on that one? I have a couple thoughts, and this one's just random. But, like, if you're Elvis and you're dead, and it seems like people would be calling for you all the time, mm -hmm. would you just, like, I'm over it? Like, I, like I think it would be really hard to get a ghost of Elvis yeah. to show up. So maybe it's somebody else kind of, hey, I'm going to play the part of Elvis today. Yes. Well, that's what I think happens right? a lot, especially, you know, we like locations that are notoriously haunted and they say the ghost of so and so haunts us. And of course, it's like the only famous person that had ever encountered the property. That must be the ghost that haunts it. Um, and, and in some cases, maybe in other cases, maybe not. I think if you're a ghost and somebody is calling out and trying to reach out to the dead and you happen to be the only one there, you're going to say you're that person too. If that's you right. know, what you need to say to get across. It's not that Elvis is doing it. It's like, there's something there and it's going to make you think it is. It doesn't care. It's just, it's trying to communicate with you. Cause I never really thought of it like that. And just now in that story, I'm like, it makes more sense that a ghost is just messing with you. Cause yeah. that's what they do all the time anyway. And they're like, look at this dumbass. He thinks it's Elvis. Right. <laughs> and then I could also see if you lived in a haunted house, because when describing that house and the Johnny Carson show and stuff made me think of the house I lived in. Um, but maybe things happened to the, it was a brother, right? Yeah. Um, maybe things happened to the brother and he doesn't, not that he doesn't want to talk about, maybe he's just kind of blocked it out. Yeah. You know, maybe it's like it was traumatic and I just don't want to remember that stuff. And I think if you live for a long time trying not to remember stuff, mm -hmm. that sometimes it just does kind of fade away. Yeah. You know, with age, there's a lot of things. Thank God for Facebook memories because <laughs> I wouldn't remember anything that happened in the last 14, 15 years. Yeah. But, but you know what I mean? I think that 
maybe legit there's no there might be a few memories there but it was traumatizing Mm -hmm. you know maybe don't want to remember it maybe you'd rather just not dwell on it move on yeah so i get that yeah i mean that could very well be what's going on uh you know with the brother doesn't mean that it didn't happen no just it's like i don't want to yeah they already went through it once. They don't necessarily want to go go through it again uh, mm-hmm. by by talking about it. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to our next letter. It says, hey, guys, love your podcast. Want to share the worst paranormal experiences I had as a child. I hope this gets posted on YouTube or on the air because I do believe many people can relate, if not several. My parents and our family moved into a big mansion house. This house was built in the early 1900s, and being unaware of any paranormal phenomena as a child, I was clueless being the youngest in my family. The first experience I can recall is being in the living room watching TV while my parents and my sister were in their rooms. Their doors were closed and soundproof due to the fact that this house was very well constructed and still maintained during the time I moved in around the year 2000. I heard someone or something moving things in our kitchen, such as dishes, bags, cabinets. So I heard the same noises a second time and turned off the TV to go and see what was going on. And I see no one there and the noises stop. The second experience, I recall my sister and I had slept in the same room when I was six years old. So I was sleeping. I woke up suddenly like you would randomly go and back to sleep. And as I tried to sleep again, I felt a force on top of me that was holding me down with great strength and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. I was trying so desperately to call my sister's name, but I couldn't do anything for about 40 seconds or so. It was the worst experience, I believe. Luckily, I haven't experienced that since then. The third time I can recall was when my mother had gone across the street. We had a local deli market, and so I was left alone in the house and was doing my homework. No TV was turned on, no loud noises in the house, nor could I hear from the outside because our home was soundproof, literally. The only thing you could hear from the, uh, was from the uh, inside of the house, if anything, but no windows were open. I suddenly hear a deep groan, almost like an animal, because the sound I heard was if someone were next to me, and so no one was in the house when this occurred. And I quickly ran out of the house and waited until my mother came back. But my sister found me outside first, and she asked what happened. I explained that I'd heard something next to me growl or try to say something to me, and she understood because she, too, had experienced paranormal activity in our room while she was sleeping. Our home wasn't exactly the modern type of house you'd expect to see. There was creaking and cracking in some areas of the house. The doors had been the same since it was constructed, and it had a vibe that isn't welcoming, to be precise. The house had a long hallway, four restrooms, ten rooms, a porch that looked broken down my room was next to that porch which made it creepy so throughout the entire time i lived there for about 10 years roughly it was difficult for me to handle those situations since i wasn't aware of any wicked spirits or things of that sort from the supernatural i was a kid now that i'm 27 years old i completely understand that i was being tormented by several foul spirits when i say several i mean more than three spirits in that house My brother had seen one spirit in particular roam the hallway going towards my room quite often and a baby who wandered into each of the rooms including the basement and another spirit that didn't have a face but was dark like pitch dark you could see its energy move through the entire house that was the vicious one who i believe disturbed us the majority of the time the last scary experience i had was when i was in my room trying to fall asleep and my sister had gone to my aunt's house so i had the room to myself I was seven years old at the time and began to hear noises in my room, specifically my sister's bed. It's like something had sat on it and I heard footsteps. I heard breathing very low, but I could sense something was there with me. And when I tell you I put the covers over my head to sleep, I did for the entire night. It was terrifying. There's so much more to tell, but these were among the worst experiences I've had in the past. Thank you for your time, and I really hope this gets played on the air or is uploaded to one of your YouTube podcast videos please keep doing what you guys are doing it's very interesting to know and hear other people's experiences and see that the paranormal is very real and should be shared with others so that people can be informed about these things thank you again take care guys 
thoughts on all that? I do think that's important to what um, she or he said at the very end about sharing things. And so you're informed, but I think it's like, so then you don't feel crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you can share a story like that. That is freaky AF Mm -hmm. and nobody's going to judge you Mm -hmm. because I totally believe all of that. Yeah. And I, I absolutely think there was something in that house. And I think when you're a kid, you know, it didn't, he or she didn't really talk about the parents having the experiences too. It was more like from the kid's point of view. Mm -hmm. Was there any reference to the parents really? Not that I recall. Because I think just a lot of times, you know, the parents, you're so caught up in being busy in life and doing all this stuff Mm -hmm. that it's like, oh yeah. Oh, the ball fell out and hit me in the middle of the back like that last one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so like my mom to this day, she goes, oh, yeah, there was some stuff, you know, but not that bad. (laughs) And we're like, it was pretty bad. But I just think that they can get through to the kids. Sure. And it's it's about perspective. And, yeah, when you're a parent, you got 500 (laughs) things going on in your mind. And, you know, so not as open. So she'll notice it. But when you're a kid, it's like, you know, oh, my God, that's that's the main attraction right now. So you, it's going to make more of an impact to the kids because they're going to be able to. It, it becomes a much bigger part of their life, I think. I wonder, too, now that I I'm thinking about this a little differently, too. I wonder, like when I was a kid, like I know what I heard. I know the things that happened happened. Mm hmm. But is it because, like, I would lie in bed and wait for it sometimes? Because, you know, you're going to fall asleep and know that it's going to wake you up. Mm-hmm. You know, and then because my mom, like, I remember one night very clearly when someone, something was walking around upstairs and she called for every one of us and we're in our rooms and we all said, yeah, I doubt like my little sister woke up. <clears throat> but, you know, but her and my brother shared a bedroom and mm-hmm. everybody's in bed. And something's up walking around. My mom does not remember that. But I remember it really clearly. So I don't know whose memory is right. I can't say just because she doesn't remember it that it never happened. No. But then how do I remember something like that? And she doesn't remember it. Sure. That's half of the conversations I have with my mom these days. (laughs) (laughs) Remember when we did this? No, I don't. I really don't. It's like... (laughs) And my mom's not like she's there. It's just not, she's you know it's, it's just it's one of those. But I, I'm I'm understanding no, it. True. I'm understanding it more and more uh, from being a parent myself now, though too, because Harper will you know bring up some random tidbit or something that happened a couple days ago or even longer, and she's like, "Remember that, Dad?" I'm like, I have no, not at all. <laughs> so I get where she's coming from because again, it's a perspective thing. When you're a little kid, everything is like a big deal because you're kind of like just, you know, very narrow sighted. You're just going and then you're going to remember all those things. And when you're the parent, you're, you know, air traffic controlling everything. Right. And so, yeah, you may kind of recall that, but it's not going to be that same imprint um, that, you know, the kid's going to have. So I, you know, I I just think it's funny because I remember my mom doesn't remember things the way they happened (laughs) at all. Trust me, there's an sense of things like, do you remember that one horrible thing you did? No. Yeah. Well, this is more like her. Well, I would never have done anything like that. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you did. Yeah. But I don't tell her not at her age. She doesn't whatever. Sure. But no, I just think it's, it's terrifying as a child when you have to live with that. Yeah. Just knowing that there's something else there and you can't see it. Cause every kid's afraid of, you know, the monster under your bed or all those things that kids mm-hmm. in their head, you know, they see something on television and then they're scared when they go to bed yeah. at night. But imagine the kids that really are living that shit. Yeah, exactly. That's scary stuff. It's like the monster at the end of this book and you find out it's just Grover all along. <laughs> Or you find out it really is a freaking ghost. <laughs> Wouldn't that be like the horrific end to the monster at the end of this book? The beloved children's book. It was my favorite book when I was a little kid. And it, it, and at the end, it's like, oh, it's just me, Grover. Like, edit the page and make it like, oh, my God, like Grover's like being like humanly or like muppetly sacrificed to a bunch of Satanists right. or something. <laughs> little and- kids. 
<laughs> he is the one that's haunting you at night. Yeah, he's like being roasted. So if you think there's something <laughs> under the bed, there is. The corpse of Grover. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the book being like that. <laughs> it's just what it is now. <laughs> Change the ending. Oh, God, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Ah, all right. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Hey, so this is Tiana. Um, So I was like 16. Like, I just turned 16. My stupid butt actually decided, hey, I'm going to mess with the visa for the first time, you know? I made a homemade one out of paper. And nothing happened, honestly, but that was not, um, so back three, I would had like, I remember having like five or six cats because we just had a mom of cat, cat break gay first. So, you know, we had that many. And so I remember hearing something in my closet and my boo of the cats were not allowed to go in there. So I heard scratching. That's what I heard. And I went in there because I was like, I was like, I don't calling one of my cats by name, one of them. I was calling actually I was calling them off. And I searched that closet from top to bottom. I didn't hear. Not here. Well, after I went in there. I didn't hear anything else, but I couldn't find nothing. That's when it scared the dickens out of me. And then it went from that to, like, I don't know, maybe that next, either a couple of days or the next day from that morning. Something actually, like, tugged my foot. I woke up, and there was nobody in there. I got up, and, like, I was like, first, I, like, lay there, first of all, and... I was like, did I really just get someone to hug my foot? Like, did, there's nobody here, you know? And I was like, maybe I was trying to brush it off, but like, I just, I knew it just, it wasn't something. I just knew something was up. But I remember getting up, I checked in my brother and my, in his room, he was last. He was asleep. Um, I remember before I got up to go check on my brother. Um, I remember looking out the window and I heard my brother, or not heard him, or I can't remember if I heard him or seen him. But my mom and my little brother was outside. They were waiting on the bus because. At the time, I was going, you know, to school, and nobody was in my room. That's how I knew nobody was in my room, and that's why I checked on my brother, and he was asleep. And so, yeah, someone tucked my foot. I know that for a fact. How I feel about that is it was basically saying, hey, I'm here. I can do this to you. That's what it felt. And... Then I, I didn't really think about it until, like, you know, older, when I told somebody about it, you know. That's how I feel about it, you know. I never just thought about it until a little later, you know. But, so, I remember there was more than that happening. There was, like, maybe one more thing that happened. And, honestly, you know, it is insane, I haven't had anything like that ever happen since there. That's the truth. So I remember, like, I remember my, okay, so me and my brother, we had a shared room. That's the, I didn't like that. 
truthfully, but it is what it is. I remember his bed being over when you walk in, and mine was when we kind of walked in. It was like the opposite way. And so we went to sleep, and it's like I woke up, but you know how you wake up and you know you're not awake? It, it, it's hard to explain, I guess. Um, I woke up, but, like, I couldn't move. Like, it, I was still, like, it, I guess I was still either my dream or I don't know what it was, truthfully. But whenever that happened, I was, I couldn't move. And what happened after that, it was, it was terrifying. I, I felt like something evil or something, like, literally trying to go after my brother, my little brother. In fact, that's who we shared with, I, who I shared with when it was my little brother. Because my older brother had his own room at the time, and so I remember that, and then I, whenever I tried to say something, like, scream or, you know, all that, I couldn't get nothing out. And, oh, I was dead after that, like, with the music boards. So, that's that's pretty much it, but, stuff I could think of on that. But, you know, that that actually scared the hell out of me whenever all that happened. And that's when I stopped with everything. I was like, this is bad. I First time, hell no, I'm not doing that again, you know. But, yeah. Uh, uh. There you go. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of things uh, happened there and uh, in kind of a collage of uh, of experience. I think a collage of experience was a good way to put yeah, it. Yeah. Um, full disclosure, I kind of had a hard time following it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know something grabbed her foot. And I know that there was a Ouija board incident. Um, so once again, don't play with Ouija boards. <laughs> I mean, good God, this whole show should be a public service announcement. To that. It has been. I mean, it, 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 it is. Uh, well, this is airing in November, but we're recording in October. And October was always Ouija Awareness Month. Where, but I mean, the thing is, like, all year is Ouija Awareness Month with the amount but, of stories. But I mean, this is shit we all did as kids, and you can't take it back now. Just when you but, thought, and the then demon she had like a very. Well, it sounded like a, kind of a a night terror type of dream. Yeah, it was a, a uh, sleep paralysis or, experience. Yeah, sleep well. paralysis, yep. which I, you know, and that to me might be um, paranormal, and very likely might not be. Yeah. Um. But it's scary. It's scary no matter what. Yeah, but the thing is, in its inherent form, if it's just sleep paralysis and there's nothing else involved, it is just your brain uh, that's that's doing that. Uh, And it's going to feel terrifying because that's what it's supposed to do. Um, It's it's a state that you can be in. But there are cases where I do believe there is something paranormal involved, but very hard to know. Right. You know, on that one uh, specifically for sure. Uh, exactly what it would be. But thanks for calling and uh, sharing that cornucopia of ghost stories. Uh, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air, become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. We greatly appreciate that. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.